Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from the Frontier. Thank you, as always, for stopping by. My home thoughts start with this photograph by Mark a Priest, bird's eye view of Mombasa Port. And indeed, it is a wonderful bird's eye view. I come from Mombasa and uh, we used to actually in the old days be allowed to go and visit and potter around the port. Of course, now it's much larger and you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, have a look at this photograph I took a couple of years ago of the sunset in Mombasa of a palm tree on the seafront. That took me back to Roberto Bolano's 2666, which is a tour de force. The sky at sunset looked like a carnivorous flower. December 26th, a couple of years ago, I took this photograph of Fort Jesus, which is in Mombasa as well, built by the Portuguese at the end of the 16th century at the southern edge of the town of Mombasa, over a spur of coral rock, and kept under their control for one century. Fort Jesus Mombasa bears testimony to the first successful attempt by Western civilization to rule the Indian Ocean trade routes, which until then had remained under Eastern influence. Have a look at this photograph that Holger posted of summer in Berlin. It looks very nice. Went to Berlin at one point. It is an extraordinary city. Political reflections, terror, Brexit, and the US election have made 2016 the year of Yeats, WB Yeats, I'd like to think. I've always found his poetry luminous, foreboding, portentous, as it were. A torrent of bad news and political upheaval has given new life to a nearly 100-year-old poem written in the aftermath of World War I. Terror attacks, the fracturing of the European Union, and a polarizing US election of May 2016, the year of the Second Coming. W.B. Yeats's chilling poem, written in 1919, is a warning of sorts for a world entering a dark, anarchic age. And let me read you, it is one of my favourite poems, turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the centre cannot hold, mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. That little boy sitting in that chair. The best lack all conviction while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming hardly are those words out vast image of Spiritus Mundi troubles my sight somewhere in the sands of the desert. A shape with lion body and the heart and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving its slow thighs while all about it, real shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again, but now I know that twenty centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. And what rough beast, its hour come round at last, slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. An analysis of Factiva media database shows that some of Yeats's most resonant lines have been quoted in news sources more often in the first seven months of 2016 than any other year past three decades. The enduring quotability of the Second Coming attests to Yeats's brilliance as a phrase maker. You'd have to go to Shakespeare's sonnets to find something that has instilled itself into the ear of the reading public over as long a period in as intense a way. Very accurate. I participated in uh, NTAM Live, which was mostly this morning's program breakfast show, mostly about the interest rate cap, but we also touched on Trump, and I said Trump has a chance if he gets his demographics out, I'm not writing him off, and I think, you know, particularly if he gets an event, you know, that plays into his narrative. 
Brexit leader Nigel Farage urges Donald Trump voters to stand up to the establishment. Former UKIP party leader Farage assured Donald Trump supporters that anything is possible, drawing parallels between the US election and Brexit during an appearance in Mississippi. Qatar has bought a stake in the owner of New York's Empire State Building. This is according to Bloomberg. I visited in May and I said then Qatar is punching beyond its size. And here is a picture of Doha taken from the skies a couple of years before that. Turkey crosses into Syria. Unipolar conspiracy or multipolar coordination? Question mark. To put it more simply, Russia and the SAA, for reasons of political sensitivity and long-term strategy, do not want to attack the YPG and proactively stop it from occupying all of northern Syria. Whereas Turkey has no such reservations in doing this and is more than eager to do the heavy lifting. France, of course, is embroiled in a Burkini controversy when you are when you are stripping women in public in that fashion, it really is the wrong way to go about things. Um, I agree. They call me outrageous, but I think if you go and settle in a predominantly Christian country, you have to adopt the social mores of the time. I remember getting into an awful argument with some chap, puppy station, who was telling me how he wanted to bring Sharia law to the United Kingdom, and I said to him, "You know what on earth for? The British have no connection." I found it quite strange that he thought that was a, a practical solution, and many of them still do. Currency markets, dollar rally wanes as markets calm before yellow. This is the predictability of a rate rise in September. I think that's not on the cards because of the closeness of the election. Let's move on to the currency markets. Euro dollar 112.73, dollar index 94.69, Japanese yen 100.40. Most people looking for a sharp move down to 95. Swiss franc 0.9661. The pound 132.10. Every time I tell people I'm getting more bullish about it, they think I'm raving mad. Australian dollar 76.21. India rupee 67.085. South, South Korean 111.1645. The real 322.53. Egyptian pound 8.88. And the rand 14.12. We'll get to that in a moment. Dollar index, let me put up a one-year chart. 93 is still the key area of support, and uh, I think Jackson Hole will be the pivot and we'll get a better insight into what uh, the federal governor is thinking. I mean, what, what they've been thinking and how they've been communicating with the market has been really wanting, I'm afraid. Jackson Hole offers Fed Chair Yellen the stage to keep a 2016 rate hike on the table. Sterling, let me put up a six-month chart of that. I like it for a rebound as high as 140, but I could see a dip out somewhere above 127.99. So now it's pushed up a little bit, so we've got to hope we get a cheaper entry level, but I think we're going to rebound to 140 before the year end. Gold, um, last trading at 1325.98. 1305.1310 13 is the key area of support. We've got to look at how it behaves down there, but given the world that we live in, the negative interest rate environment, makes sense to hold gold. The CEO of commodities trader Fibro recommends shorting oil at $50. I'll put up a crude six-month chart of crude oil. We're now at $46.89 in the US. Uh, I don't think we're going to run away. I'm not one of those. I think the best trade actually is probably to sell calls of 60 on another push to, to, towards 50. Um, coal rebound, actually, that could Interesting. If you look at look at this chart, Australian coal is at a 17-month high, apparently. So quite a rebound there. Mongolia's epic meltdown won't be reversed by a mining revival yet. Have a look at the currency, which fell at one point for 24 days in a row. Congo faces increased stability as key vote date approaches. This is a report carried on Bloomberg, we are set to see a significant escalation in tensions as we approach a number of key political deadlines, said Ronak Gopaldas, he's the head of risk, country risk at RMB. The strike can be seen as a possible precursor of what to expect as the country begins to navigate a very complex and potentially messy political situation, I think he's correct. Um, and we'll have to
to see how it plays out. And this plays back to the point that I think you know, repression is not working as it used to work before. And therefore, it, notwithstanding that Kabila has triangulated his neighbors, I think Kagame and Museveni, he's kicked um, Moishi out of the country, but at some point Moishi is surely going to try and come back. He has to if he's going to burnish his credentials as the can opposition candidate. But obviously, it's a little bit tricky. Zuma bids to tighten grip the South African police target Gordon, stung by his ruling party's worst electoral performance since the end of apartheid. President Zuma is going for broke in a battle to maintain his grip on power. The first casualties have been the nation's rand and bombs. First came Monday's announcement that he plans to run a committee that will oversee the nation's state and companies. The finance minister, Pravin Gordon, with whom Zuma has had fra a fractious relationship, said it received correspondence from a special police unit known as the Hawks. The Daily Maverick website say he may face charges over allegations he oversaw an illicit unit to spy on politicians when he ran the state tax agency. Gordon is determined to stay in his position a person familiar with the situation said. I thought this quote was very relevant. Daryl Glazer, South African president's response to the election setback and the response of many around him has been to dig in deeper and basically go on a mission of revenge. The RAND dumped 1.2% uh, on Wednesday. Uh, it's now trading around 14.12. Zuma has little to lose after the ANC's unprecedented losses in the local elections, said Anne Fruhauf. Uh, she's a Teneo. The president will be keen to protect his interests, even if it means risking major market fallout. And we've learned that before. Um, after the thrashing it received in the local elections, you'd think the ANC's leadership would do its utmost to restore unity in the party, said Nicholas Spiro. This is patently not the case. The only thing stopping Gordon throwing in the towel is the fear that the financial fallout would be severe. South African oil shares up 5.66% this year. The rand closed at a three-week low. Um, as we learned that the finance minister has been summoned, have a look at Pravin Gordon's full statement on why he refuses to pitch up at the Hawks. And he's actually in quite a powerful position because I think you know the president cannot afford to let him get more fractious than this. However, his replacement, uh, if, it's, if the rumors are correct, is someone called Brian Molefe, who I met in Tanzania, very articulate. And I think he would steady the ship. So that's how the scenario looks to me. I'll put up a photograph of the South African president, Zuma, and also take you back to December 2015 when I said the markets are not interested in Zuma's explanations. They are seeing a South African president who's gone rogue. Egyptian EGX 30 up 17.39% this year. The Nigerian all shares down 2.66% this year, but FX sanctioned banks came under tremendous selling pressure. Ghana's stock exchange composite index is down 8.96% this year. The Sudanese pound has fallen to a record low against the dollar on the black market. The cost of a dollar on the parallel market rose to 16 Sudanese pounds from 15.1 last month. The government has kept the official rate at 6.4 to the dollar since August 2015. There is a sort of panic. People are buying dollars at any price and exchanging their savings from pounds to dollars. Given the scarcity of the dollar, this way the dollar will, price will continue to rise. Zimbabwe has started firing state workers as it runs out of money. 300,000 state workers uh, uh, on the payroll will start firing employees at its agriculture ministry as it seeks to trim a civil service where wages absorb over 80% of government revenue. Let's move to Kenya, where we've had some very big news. President Kenyatta signs the interest rate bill at State House in Nairobi on August 24, 2016. Look at this photograph. Everyone's smiling, even those who advocated against his signing of the bill. That must have been terrible. Big smiles now. Legislators have threatened to veto his decision and marshal two-thirds support for a popular amendment to political hot potato in an election year. That's a fact. So, you know, he probably thought he would be diminished politically if he turned it and it came back to him with a two-thirds support. 
have a look at the statement, which wasn't really well written, I'm afraid, and I think it's also further sent, further mixed messages. Um, uh, we are, reiterate our commitment to free market policies and driving sustainable economic growth, to which we owe much of our success. It's going to be fiendishly complicated. The devil will be in the detail in the opera operationalizing of this act. Banking shares here at the Nairobi Stock Exchange have taken an awful beating. Equity, KCB and others are down, limit down, huge shares on offer. This was the problem I'd outlined when I spoke with um, Raman Yang yesterday at CCTP. I wrote a piece on the 8th of August 2016 about why I thought that capping interest rates was a bad idea. And I said, what is clear is that Brexit and the candidacy of Donald Trump confirm we have entered a new populist normal. Politicians the world over are having to wrestle this populist tail, uh, tiger by its tail. I said, interest, int interest rate ceilings cause credit suppliers to withdraw from the market and competition to decrease. And I think all these guys are going to do banks as lent to the government because that's a risk free loan. I said the collateral damage that we would encounter from this bill would be immediate and brutal. Our eurobond yields would blow out, is what I thought. I said bank shares would come under tremendous pressure. Um, and I said our free market bona fides built over years will be eroded overnight. I understand the emotions, the fact that, you know, we do need low interest rates, but I think this was a very blunt instrument, a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Um, Gabriel Nagato, who was also sharing uh, this morning's program, he was part of the panel, said, you know, there's a signaling effect in the bill, and this is a midterm correction. He was actually quite bullish. It is always a pleasure speaking with Raman Yang on CCTV News. I'll put up that photograph. Diamond Trust has reported its first half profit after tax increased 11.289%. Interestingly, they expanded their loan book to customers by 10%. Loan loss provision was increased 250%. Profit before tax was up 12.65%. Earnings per share unchanged. No interim dividend. Look, you know, these are strong earnings, but obviously now the context, the context has entirely changed. Nassim runs a really solid operation. And I think, you know, uh, at a price earnings of 6.511, it's not bad. It'll probably go lower. It's down limit down today, actually. Britam has reported first half profit after tax rallied 184.822%. Very big eye popping number gross and premium up 3.156%. Total revenue up 14.845%. Profit before tax up 175%. Earnings per share 92 cents a share versus 32 cents last time round. In their commentary, they said the core business performed very well in the first half of 2016, achieving a 175% increase in PPT, investment income up 38%, asset management revenue up 21%, total assets up 7%. However, it was an accounting treatment. They've changed from they've changed to valuing um, uh, to a model called GPV, which is gross premium valuation. Previously, it was net premium valuation that this created a decline in net claims expense by 2.2 billion shillings, creating an improvement in the profitability of 1.95 billion shillings. You'd strip that improvement out and they were slightly behind the previous year. NEC reported first half earnings per share down 53.623%, operating income down 22.83%. Highly correlated to volumes, and it's been a low volume bear market for most of the year. Tallow has raised Kenya's oil export hopes with the March 2017 production date. Uh, the Nairobi oil share up 0.54% uh, year to date, but it's going to crash today, as is the NSE 20, which is at a 52 month low and down 14.31% this year. If you want to follow the stock market and you have some bank shares or anything, please just register on rich.co.ke. It's free, just get a password and then use your password to get onto Rich Live, which is uh, where the live prices are transmitted in trading hours. Any problems, please tag Marbithi, M-A-R-M-B-I-T-H-I, and we'll attempt it as quickly as possible. Once again, thank you for stopping by.